Stefan. I got my name tag here. But yeah, basically uh, this project here is about one year old. Or we're gonna have our first anniversary here on May uh, 14th. $23 million project, privately owned. Um, beautiful lodge built with local fur from uh, the area here. Beautiful lift built in Austria, $9 million for the lift. 1.9 kilometers on the line. You came up 850 meters, which brings us about halfway up the mountain here. The highest summits here are around 2,000 meters. Well, we can't see that from here, but um, yeah, and here we're at 885 meters. The base is at 35 meters. So one of the nice features we see from here is the house sound, of course. So there's quite a nice story that goes with the house sound because that has a, quite a histo in, uh, industrial history. And uh, which unfortunately brought a lot of pollution and, and killed off a lot of the, the marine life. But now it's a story of recovery. A lot of the, uh, the fish are coming back. Decades they okay. were gone through uh, because of pollution. But now things are coming back. We're seeing a lot more herring. With the herring, we're seeing more dolphins. With the dolphins, we're seeing more killer whales. And uh, we even saw a gray whale here about four years ago. So that was a pretty rare event. Maybe a hundred years since a gray whale had been here. Um, down below we can see the point of first contact where the Captain George Vancouver came here and met the Squamish people for the first time 221 years ago in 1791. Uh, so we can see that. It's, it's, uh, it's, we call it Watts Point, that place, but in the native language they have another word for that that translates into many white people rock. You can't get it from here either, but it's just down there. It's, it's like a point in the, in the house sound, yeah. And uh, so that's, um, so uh, of course, a uh, long history of First Nation habitation here. At least 6,000 years, perhaps as long as 10,000 years, people have been living here. And many of them as well. When Captain George Vancouver came here, there were six villages here, native villages, and perhaps as many as 10,000 people were already living here. From eating for the berries and the fish and, uh, and the very low technology that they had. So quite impressive. The wildlife, there, everything that you would expect to find in BC exists around here. Although it's very unlikely you will see anything when you're visiting here. But uh, bears, cougars, bobcats, uh, mountain goats up in the mountains. Uh, I'm forgetting many deer and so on. They've all been seen here through a wildlife cameras that we had set up here last summer. So they're all here. Lots of different bird species. We are up to that gentleman you spoke to earlier. He's is uh, he's seen uh, 41 species of birds here so far. So there's lots of uh, lots of birds to be seen. With beautiful mountains here. Uh, of course, we can't see them from where we have a couple of uh, very easy interpretive trails for our local uh, guests that are easy. They're meant for uh, everybody. You can push a stroller down there. You can bring grandpa with a cane, no problem. But we have other, lots of other alpine trails as well. Trails that keep going up the mountain and that bring people to some very, very special places. So the, the, the main one, the Panorama Trail is about a half hour trail that's stroller friendly. And uh, I would say that's uh, essential for people to walk that. When you come here, uh, half of the experience of being here is to go walk that trail. It takes you to a really spectacular viewing platform that looks over the Squamish Valley and the um, uh, the Squamish Valley and the House Sound, the Har or Harp. With uh, no, not really. If when there is a trail that people hike up from the bottom, and eventually it goes beside the creek, and there are some waterfalls, but not the main Shannon Falls. You can't see that from the trail. No, it takes about three hours to hike from the bottom to the summit here. It's very, very popular. Stuart oh, the Stewart rock the chief. Yeah, so that's outside our tenure. That's within the provincial park. And that's one of the main uh, features of, of the landscape in Squamish. Uh, so my, my name is uh, Stefan. I am uh, one of the tour guides here at Sea to Sky Gondola. And uh, welcome to Sea to Sky Gondola. And we do have two tours a day that people can join for free. Uh, interpretive tour where people will learn about the, the construction of the, of the Sea to Sky Gondola here, First Nations, the house sound talk about the uh, First Nations and uh, and talk about our local mounds as well. So that leaves at 11 o'clock in the morning and 2 o'clock in the afternoon. You're all welcome. Yeah, so we are open year-round here. We're just uh, started the beginning of our summer season now. 
and uh, in the summertime it's mostly about uh, hiking, walking around, enjoying the sights, enjoying the, the beautiful views from a patio. Come winter time we, uh, we're open seven days a week as well. We actually put ski racks on our um, cabins here. People can bring their skis and go skiing in the mountain. We also have a tube park for, for people who want to slide. Nice for children and for adults as well. And uh, snowshoeing is one of the main activities here in the wintertime. And although we're only halfway up the mountain, on a normal winter, we expect to have a meter or perhaps as many as two meters of snow here. So this is, becomes a real winter wonderland in the winter season. So of course I mentioned our lodge earlier, beautiful lodge, full service uh, restaurant in there. Uh, we also have a retail area in there, of course, bathrooms and so on. Beautiful deck to enjoy the views while you're having lunch or having a drink. And uh, we are open from 10 o'clock to 7 p.m. And starting May 15th, we'll be open on Fridays and Saturdays till 9 p.m. We'll be offering uh, uh, evening dinner on those evenings where people can sit on our front deck and enjoy the sunset. It's a lovely experience. Thank you. My name is Sandra and I'm from Windsor, Ontario.